Coast Metal Roofing, Manchester Boston Regional Airport, and by Needham Bank. Can Needham Bank be your bank? And of course, it's a bye week, so Bubs Edelman joins us on a Wednesday, not a Friday. Hey, Bubs. Full intro music. I yes. mean, come on, bro. Um, are you okay with the chili peppers, or you want something else? Love the chili peppers, but I mean, I guess it's suitable for, you know, being under a bridge, I guess. So it will be all right. Yeah, better than <laughs> better than being, you know, at the edge of a, a bridge or something. I, I wanted to ask um, how long it takes you to get over a loss like that one Sunday night. Um, you know, it, it, I've always been taught to have a short memory, whether it's a win or a loss. Uh, obviously, it's a lot harder when you know a loss, especially going into a bye week, because you got this this feeling in the back of your throat, thinking about that game of what you could have done uh, better. But also, you know, you know, the, it's it's the middle of the season, so you know uh, you can learn from it. Thank God we we have another game. Um, you know, and we have this week to kind of focus on ourselves and uh, address things we need to work on and, and sharpen things that, uh, you know, we've been doing well. So, you know, that's kind of the mindset you're in. Is there any worse feeling than, than turning the ball over for a touchdown? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not. Um it actually reminds me of when I was I was a sophomore in high school. We were playing a championship game. Uh, Woodside High School versus Menlo Atherton. Uh, we were tied with like nine seconds to go. <clears throat> they were on their 30. I was playing deep safety. Guy went it back and chucked it up. I went and jumped for an interception, caught it. I was like putting like a, we call it a stumble bomb. It's where you put your hand down to keep yourself up with the ball, uh, with, with your hand and you have the ball in the other hand and a guy came and scooped it, took it from me, scored. They won, won the championship, two undefeated teams, rival schools. Oh. So it, it, it's pretty much, um, it's pretty much a bad, bro. You know, Sunday night football against a really good football team. Uh, you, you can't make those kind of errors, and uh, you know, I felt like I felt like crap um, about it. But uh, you, you had to move on and and um, go and play the next play and the next next series. And you know, I felt like um, you know, we kind of we did that. We didn't we didn't quit by any means. Uh, you saw a lot of fight. You know, there's been times where you know, we've been down those many points. You know, the Kansas City game a few years back, you know, you get blown out. You know, it was good to see that we, we still fought. Um, it just wasn't our day. Uh, it was it was Baltimore's day. They had, they had a great plan. They, they executed and they made more plays than us. So, move on. We're moving on. We're moving on. on. To Philly. <laughs> We're on to Philly. On to Philly. We're on to Philly. On to Philly. You, uh, you weren't able to watch the broadcast. There, you know, there was a complete tongue bath by Chris Collinsworth for Lamar Jackson. As a as a guy who played the position in college, uh, what do you make of him as a, as a QB? And some who are saying that uh, his style of play will revolutionize the NFL. I mean, you never know. I, I don't. I, I can't look that far into the future. Um, he played a hell of a game. He he's a super dangerous player. Um, that's for sure. Uh, you know, he made plays with his with his feet. He made a few plays with his arm. Um, you know, it's he's a good football player. Yeah. What is so, um, you know, consistency will kind of show if, if it does that. Uh, you know, if he continues to do that, uh, then, then potentially, I guess, it could revolution. I don't know. Uh, I'm a fortune teller. What is, um, what's Bill like after a, a loss like that? Uh, I mean, 
he's what you expect him to be. I mean, no one hates losing more than a coach. And that's that's what you want from your leader. Um, someone who cares about, you know, football and, and winning so much. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not a it's not a pleasant place to be, but you know, with with coach, you know, he's the type of guy that's going to say, you know, he could have made a lot of different decisions, and 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 you know, he always tries to take a lot of blame, this, that, and the other. When uh, you know, a lot of times it could have been us, could have been there, but uh, that that's, that showcases the kind of leader he is, and um, you know, I'm sure he'll be honest this week, and and you know, he's got to. No one's better at, at turning the page than coach. So, you know, we'll, we'll turn the page and, and we'll go from here and, and focus our, our week on, on preparing ourselves, uh, getting ourselves better this week, take advantage of this time um, to get some work in and then also get away from the game. It's been 15, 16 weeks straight. Uh, so, you know, and then reboot and then get ready to, to go on this uh, back half. Julian. Uh, you guys were in the hurry-up offense for the majority, if not almost all of the game, playing in the 11 personnel. Do you like the hurry-up offense? Do you guys feed off that energy? I know it can be pretty exhausting, but the Ravens said they felt like at times they had absolutely no answer for you guys Sunday night when you guys were hurrying up. Yeah, I mean, I like it. Um, you know, it definitely uh, it simplifies things, I guess. Uh, you know, and... Uh, you know, when we're playing fast and we're, when we're executing and when we're getting the drive started, it, it's a great, it's a great tool. Um, so, you know, I, I like it, but I also like uh, the other way we play as well. I mean, it's whatever, uh, you know, coaches come in with the game plan each week on what they feel. They do a bunch of studying. They do a bunch of hard work of, you know, on our opponents and, um, you know, whatever they feel, you usually feel like it's going to give you a shot to win. So you go out there and you, you try to execute to your best. Julian, do you typically lay low during the bye and chill out and relax? Have you ever taken like a crazy vacation or anything? I have not taken a crazy vacation. Um, you know, I, I have a pop-up shop coming this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, over on Boylston at Concepts. Uh, that'll be fun. I, I like to go and hang out with some of the people out there. Um, I, I do have to make a couple quick trips here and there uh, just to take care of some some business, kind of get your life in order. Um, you know, we're launching my uh, my my line with Josh Jeans coming out, so I got a big. I got to do a dinner over uh, in New York for that. So wait, what's the name? Do, do you have a name for the Jeans line? Yeah, it's Julian Edelman by Joe's. You guys got to check it out. It's, I'm super excited. Spent a lot of time on it. Yeah. Um, very comfortable fitting jeans, but also look, you know, and, and feel the part of, of what fashion is, is going toward these days and, and kind of very minimalistic type stuff, but awesome for anyone's uh, wardrobe. So I mean, are they, excited for that. Put some time into that. Are they, you know, know they they appropriate for a you know a, 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 a an older uh, uncle type guy like myself. I mean, they said comfort I, fit. Yeah, so, we'll, what do you think? For sure, we're gonna have some. We're gonna have. I'll have some tailored up for old Hilly. We we'll get him right. Thirty six. You know, put him still, in some skinnies. Still a thirty six. What? Still, I'm still a. Th- what do you mean? Mm-hmm. I still, I'm still a thirty six. I've been a thirty six since. Thirty six, thirty eight, whatever. <laughs> and we'll have the tailor come out. We don't need to put out numbers. Just put it up on your skin. I mean, I always thought there should be a jean company that does what ladies do with their clothing. And if your actual size is 36, mm-hmm. it should say 28 right. or, or or 30 on it to make you feel better about yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I disagree, man. You got to take that 36. You got to embrace it, man. You're a large man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 36 is 18 times 2, buddy. That's a good number. <laughs> Nick, you had a follow-up follow up question. That's yeah. life. Yes. Uh, 18. <laughs> so, Julian, before the game, uh, Mohamed Sanu was seen talking to Nikhil Harry. Uh, you know, some said maybe, like, giving him advice or helping coach him up. You've been a receiver now in the league for 10 years. When you've got guys like Jacoby Myers and Nikhil Harry 
who are trying to crack the lineup and could use probably some coaching tips and advice. What kind of role do you take as a veteran mentor to these guys that are trying to crack, trying to crack the team and uh, help the offense? Um, I, 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 I approach it with, I let them know if, if they need any help, I'm out there. Um, but also kind of what I was taught, don't be heard, be seen. And, and with that meaning, you know, be seen working hard, be seen practicing hard, going out. And I try to, you know, just kind of show them those kind of ways uh, through my routine and through how I prepare. And, um, you know, when I, you know, if you see a guy and, and he needs to be talked to, you're going to talk to him, you're going to address him. But uh, a lot of times, you know, you, you kind of, you let them come to you. Uh, at least that's what I do. Um, you know, if I need, if I know a guy needs to be talked to, um, you know, you try to go and you, you try to comfort them and let them know, you know, hey, this is uh, this isn't easy because if it was, everyone would do it. And then, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, this this position is tough to play in this league, especially here with the, you know, the variables that you you have offense and, and the learning curve of how uh, we do things. So. Yeah, that's kind of how I try to approach it. Um, but uh, I'll tell you right now, Momo's an uh, unbelievable teammate, and I didn't even know about that. And, and, it, and it doesn't surprise me that he was probably talking to Keel or, or whatever and, and probably giving him some, some great words of advice because he's, he's played a lot of football in this league as well. Seems like he's been able to adapt system-wise pretty quick. Yeah, man. He's, he's, he, had, he had a good game, and he did a lot of great things for us out there. And uh, it's good having him. You know, it's, it's good having a playmaker. Um, where does where does Philly rank when it comes to uh, obnoxious, crazy fans as mm -hmm. far as playing on the road in the NFL? Um, I love all Lincoln Financial Arms. That's the first stadium I ever got to play in, in the National Football League as a Patriot back in August 19, 2009. Uh, so I, I love going to Philly. I mean, of course, yeah, their fans are their fans are very passionate. Um, you know, it's it's a sports town, and you know, I'm kind of a fan of fans. Like when you play other teams, fans, Bill Mafia, Phil Philly fans. Chicago play those people and you know, I, I, I like I like playing against very passionate fan groups. It's, it makes the game more fun and it makes the game um, it makes the game what you remember when you were a kid uh, when you were rooting for your team. So uh, I mean they're up there. They, they they're certainly up there with um, you know a crazy group of people that love their football and. Um, you know, that, that usually is the formula for a good football city. The Twisted Question of the Week for Julian Edelman is brought to you by Twisted Tea Hard Ice Tea. And this comes from a 508 texter. Which national pundit do you hate the most? I guess we could suggest Max Kellerman or... Uh, could Rob be, Parker? Uh, it could be right. Shannon, Shannon Sharp. Uh, which Chris Collinsworth, which do you hate the most? Uh, I don't I don't hate any of them. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't waste my energy on, on people just trying to make the living, honestly. They're just trying to do their job, make a headline, this, that, and the other, and that's that's their that's their job, so I mean, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna hate on a man's hustle if, if they're trying to be loud about something, this, that, and the other. You let them do their thing and worry about what you gotta do to, to go out and get your nut. Ignore the noise yes. and go get your nut, right? Is that what you're saying? Hey, man, just a squirrel trying to go out and get nuts, but it's the squirrel. Um, I believe, speaking of the pop-up shop, is there another children's book coming? Flying High Three is coming along. It's I, I think it's we're, we're pretty much about to launch. Uh, came out awesome. I'm, I'm super excited for completing the trilogy of Flying High. Um, 
self-proclaimed, probably the best trilogy of all time. Uh, children books. Um, fun project, obviously. Uh, I was inspired when I had my daughter. Uh, so when we created this little franchise, and now we're on three. Uh, which which it, it's it's completely crazy to me um, that I have three cool little children's books that you know I'm super proud of and um, you know excited to go out and, and and see what people think of it. So uh, yeah, we have Flying High Three uh, coming to a website near you um, soon. All right. Well, I think it's out right now. It could be out right now. Probably out right now. But, yeah, it's it's. I think it's out right now. It's it will it'll be at the pop up shop. So if you guys want to come check it out, you know, come come to Dallas District concept. I think it's what is it? What is it? What is it? Three. I think it's three fifty. Three hundred five. Uh, three fifty or three hundred five. I think it's three fifty Boylston Street. Three fifty or three hundred five. <laughs> it's one of those. And you'll be there. Yeah, you can... know your stuff. Let's go. No, you're gonna, you're it's gonna... your pop up. Talking to me, by the way. <laughs> talking to me. He's talking to himself. I'm a Gemini, bro. I speak to myself. There you go. Two people fighting daily in my head. Uh, are you uh, you're gonna be there on and off all weekend, right? Uh, Saturday and Sunday I will be there. Okay. All right. I will not list the times so everyone go, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> All right. Well, use the bi week wisely. There's going to be some fun stuff there. There's going to be there's going to be limited edition things. Uh, it's going to be a fun environment. Uh, we'll probably have some guys. Who knows? They'll probably show up. They do every year. So one of the, one of the fellows might come come through. We always have a couple. Uh, so it's it's going to be exciting and fun. And uh, look forward to it. Look forward to seeing all of you guys out there. Uh, maybe Greg comes. Who knows? Yes, I will be there. Um, we'll see. I'll be there. Yeah. Hey, uh, 401 texter wants to know if you heard what Jerry Rice said about you. Um, that I have good footwork. My, yes, uh, my best. buddy Stacey Wolf from Kent State texts me uh, when that happened. Pretty cool. Um, it, it's pretty cool to hear that. Um, you know, I don't necessarily agree with him. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll take it for sure. All right. Well, great to talk to you. We'll talk to you again next week, all right? All right, guys. All Have right. a good uh, week, and uh, let the song keep playing. Okay, we will let the song keep playing. Yes, we will. All right. And we will not deny the man is hustle. All right. Thanks, Julian. And, by the way, the...